In this video we're going to look at electromagnetic induction and how that leads us to understand how DC motors operate. So in a previous video we've talked about how a current carrying conductor creates a magnetic field and what we're going to consider in this first part of the video is what happens when a current carrying conductor first of all produces a magnetic field but then interacts with a magnetic field that surrounds it. So in this diagram here I, I've got a, a magnetic field represented by these north and south poles and we can just imagine that these are the poles of just an ordinary magnet for now but we know that there's going to be a magnetic field created between these two poles and between the two poles I've also got a conducting wire and let's imagine that we've got a current traveling in this direction down the wire and we know from our previous video that this current is going to create a magnetic field around the wire and that magnetic field is going to have this direction like so uh, we can use our right hand rule to, to figure that out just like we talked about in our previous video. Let's now think about these two poles either side because they're also going to create a magnetic field which is going to have an effect on this wire. So if we take this front view of the two poles we know that uh, a magnet creates a magnetic field from north to south. So ordinarily uh, we would get field lines that stretch from the North Pole to the South Pole, like so. Now the problem we have is that in our example we have a conducting wire that's going between these two poles and we know that this conducting wire is going to create its own magnetic field and like we said on the previous slide there because that current is coming towards us which we represent by this symbol here the magnetic field is going to extend around the conducting wire in a counterclockwise direction and so we'll get something that looks like that. Now because we have two magnetic fields that are competing with one another the field between the north and the south pole is going to become misshapen and it's going to look more like this and what that means is because the field between the north and the south pole has had to adjust itself to work around the field produced by the conductor we get this this shape of field here which is actually going to be, uh, produce a force on the wire and the force in this case is going to be upwards so we have a force that we can mark on there so we have this interesting combination of two magnetic fields producing a force which is going to move this wire in an upwards direction. We can almost think of this as like a, an elastic band or like a catapult. We've, we've made a lot of tension in these field lines and that's going to force the wire out of between those two poles there so that the fields can return to their normal shape. Similarly, if we reversed one of these properties if we said for instance that this was a conductor with the current traveling away from us into the screen then the force would be downwards all of this diagram would be the opposite those field lines would be stretched over the top of the wire and it would it would produce a force in a downwards direction or similarly I could reverse the direction of these two poles the north could be on the right and the south on the left and that similarly would make the opposite effect and we'd have a downwards force rather than an upwards one. So what does this have to do with DC motors? Well a DC motor has what's called an armature which I'll just mark on uh, the diagram here because we can think of an armature as just a circuit within a magnetic field and the armature is part of the machine or the motor that rotates in response to a magnetic field. So in this case we have a current um, which is traveling around this little closed loop here. Uh, we have a cell and current's going to flow through the magnetic field and back again. And so in this case where the current is flowing away from us we're going to see a downwards force like we talked about on the previous slide and when the current is flowing uh, back towards us again we're going to see 
an upwards force. And so the net result is we're going to see this kind of rotating effect produced by the two forces actually moving this whole circuit uh, down at one end and up at the other. Straight away though we run into a problem because let's say this rotational motion occurs and the force on this side of the circuit moves the circuit upwards and the force on this side of the circuit moves the wire downwards and we're going to see that rotation. Well, as soon as this side of the circuit gets to the top as high as it can go, and as soon as this side of the circuit gets to the bottom as low as it can go, well, the motion's going to stop. To solve this problem, we introduce the idea of the split ring commutator. And the split ring commutator is a clever little mechanism, which means that as this circuit rotates, like we said before, uh, so we'll have a, a downwards motion on this side, so we have a force moving downwards and an upwards force on this side. As this circuit rotates, we reach a point in the split ring commutator where this part of the circuit will then connect to the other side of the circuit. And likewise, this wire will connect to the other side of the circuit. And so the polarity of the circuit or the direction of the current is reversed. And so the motor moves downwards again and we get a full circular motion. We can also view this as a cross section where we've got our two conductors and together these form the armature. So I'll just mark that on uh, here. These two collectively we can term as the armature of the motor. Now in this section we're going to try and calculate a couple of different properties of this particular motor. We're going to calculate uh, the force and force we measure in newtons. And we're also going to calculate the torque. And the torque of the motor is measured in newton meters. So there's a few properties of our motor that we need to be aware of before we can calculate these. Firstly, we need to know the diameter of our armature. So I'll mark on, uh, for example's sake, that we have a diameter in this case of three centimeters. I'll make a note of that on the right hand side here as well. So the diameter is three centimeters. We also need to be aware of the length of each of these conductors perpendicular to the magnetic field. And so let's say for example's sake that the length of each of these conductors L is 10 centimeters. Finally, we need to know the current that goes through these conductors. And let's say the current of our armature is 5 amps. So I'll make a note on the right hand side as well. I equals 5 amps. Let's begin first by calculating the force on each of these conducting wires. Well, in our case here, we can use the formula F equals B I L. Now we know B from our previous video to represent the magnetic flux density. I stands for the current in these conductors and L is the length of each of the conductors. Let's say for example sake that B, the magnetic flux density uh, between the north and the south pole here is 0.1 Tesla. So I'll make a note of that in the upper right corner as well. B equals 0.1 Tesla. So applying this to our formula, we can say that F equals B, which we just said is 0.1, times I, the current, which we said is 5, multiplied by L, the length, 10 centimeters, which we need to express as an SI unit in meters. So we'll say 0.1 meters. And multiplying those together, I get an answer of 0.05 newtons. We've calculated the force on one of these conductors, but we know that the armature is experiencing two forces at the same time. One force is pulling it up at one end, and the other is pulling it down at the other end. And so finally, we have to say that the total force, which I'll call Ft, is equal to two times the force that we've just calculated uh, to get the total force on the armature. So 2 times 0.05.
and that gives me a total force of 0.1 newtons. Finally, to calculate the torque of this motor, we're going to use the formula T for torque equals F times R. F in this case is the total force that we've just calculated, but R represents the radius. One thing that we have to remember is that we've been quoted the diameter of the armature, whereas we need the radius. So when we use our formula, we have to take that into account. So T for torque equals F, which we've just said is 0.1, multiplied by the radius. Well, if our diameter is three centimeters, it means our radius must be half of that, which is 1.5 centimeters. And again, we have to make sure that we express that in SI units. So rather than uh, 1.5 centimeters, I should say 0 0.015 meters. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the minus three. And that's measured in Newton meters. I hope you found this video useful on how, first of all, we can show that current carrying conductors have a force exerted on them when they are in a magnetic field. And then finally, how we can calculate some parameters of DC motors, including force and torque.